Welcome to KB2 UKA's Audio Hour. And by hour, I mean more like 10 minutes. Maybe. Today, on today's episode, we're going to discuss how KB2 UKA routes his audio, utilizing the Behringer XR18 and PreSonus Studio One. We had such a debacle running the audio and Thetis on the iMac that we had to come up with something new for the PC. So I hope you enjoy. And remember, if you like this channel, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much. Enjoy the content. All right, guys. So uh, here we go. Um, this is the GUI for the Behringer XR18. A uh, very popular digital mixer uh, used in live sound and uh, also becoming very popular um, in amateur radio. Uh, many people call it a rack in a box, and I'm going to show you why very briefly. Uh, this really is not a video on uh, how really all the ins and outs of uh, the X, uh, X-Air work, um, but I'll give you a quick overview. So... Uh, this is the 18, so I have 18 in and out channels. Uh, well, 18 inputs. Uh, the 18 is also an audio interface where each input is also a USB in and a USB out. So it allows uh, using an SDR like, um, like the Anon or a Flex or a Sun SDR, it makes it very, very easy to route audio. And uh, it also allows you to route audio uh, into a DAW, but that's going to be for uh, discussion in a few minutes. Um, so the way most people use the XAIR for amateur radio, right here is my mic input. Uh, my mic is a KU58 uh, ribbon mic, uh, which requires phantom power. So, and this is all customizable. This is my Thetis RX, the Anon Receive. This is my mic. This is my DAW in, and I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Um, but as you can see on my mic channel, here's your controls. I have uh, phantom power turned on. This is the gain setting that I have. And then from here, you can add a noise gate, and this is for every channel, okay? Noise gate, you can EQ. This is uh, one of my EQs for this uh, audio profile. Um, you can apply compression all with uh, inside uh, uh, the X-Air. You can also add numerous, numerous different built-in plugins or effects, uh, from reverbs to stereo delays, uh, graphical EQs, de some of the um, vintage EQs that are obviously renamed, but these are uh, emulations of the Pultec EQs, uh, 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 compressors, all sorts of things, okay? Really good one is um, the dual combinator. This is basically a multiband compressor. Very, very nice device. I am not using any of the effects uh, for my current profile because I'm doing all the effects processing inside of uh, PreSonus Studio One, which is a digital audio workstation. Uh, you do not need to do this. I'm just anal retentive about the plugins, and I want to use specific ones, and I want to have more control, so I route into the DAW. Um, and speaking of routing, I mentioned that everything is a USB in and out as well. So these are the USB returns. So channel 1 returns to USB 1, channel 2 returns to USB 2, et cetera, et cetera. And these are all customizable however you like. Um, it's important to note that with Thetis, it sends and receives on USB channel one and two. So I have to make sure on my USB sends that my main output of the XAIR is USB one and two. I'm not gonna get into these colors right now, but these colors just mean that, uh, well, the light blue means that I am sending the signal post fader. So the fader actually controls um, how much of the signal is getting through or not. So I send channel three into studio one. So let me show you what that looks like uh, real quickly. And what you're hearing right now with this audio 
is um, everything for my 4K audio profile, except I also EQ my main output a little bit. And um, actually, no, you are hearing that. You, you should be hearing that as well. You are very good. And by the way, I don't know who that crazy nut was at the intro of the video. Uh, this, they'll let anybody in this place. All right. Um, so, without further ado, here is my PreSonus setup. Up here, that's just a recording that I did uh, for the intro. So we're going to get rid of that. We don't need that. So, if I bring up the X Air and PreSonus, you will see that my input is channel 3 from the X Air. And what do you know? Channel 3 of the X Air, 1, 2, 3, I've renamed these, is my mic input. So I'm sending my mic, which has already been EQ'd, okay? Um, actually, let me make sure that's the case. See, I learned something as I do this stuff. Let's go to that channel real quick. Um, post EQ. Okay, good. Good, good, good. We are post EQ and we're post fader. We're post fader on uh, bus one and two and we're post fader on the effects. Okay. All right, good. So I send my uh, mic channel, which has already been EQ'd, gated, and slightly compressed to PreSonus. And that mic channel now is being, uh, these plugins are being applied to the mic channel. So again, I EQ. Let's uh, bring this up a little bit more. So my voice goes into the microphone. It hits the XR in channel three. It goes through a noise gate. You could see the noise gate working right there. It then goes to an EQ. I'm all about subtractive EQing. Notice no boosting. Um, this is for uh, 60 kilohertz low, 4K high on my transmit bandwidth. It then gets, um, I don't know, 6 to 8 dB of compression. That's really on loud stuff like I'm doing now. Uh, it probably averages about, you know, 4 to 6. This is light compression just to hold everything together. And then it gets sent into the DAW. When we get to the DAW, we're applying a uh, Pultec EQ emulator. Um, I have very, you'll notice my boost on my low end and my attenuation on my low end are the same. You guys should YouTube that uh, if you're using a Pultec. That's called the Pultec bass trick where you boost and attenuate at the same level. And I'm, uh, the low frequency in play here is 30 hertz. There is a Q to the boost, so I'm just touching my 60. If I move it up to 60, it's too much, so I like to keep it a little bit below. And then I am boosting uh, a little bit of the high end right around 4K. Uh, I'm attenuating at 5K, but I've got a bandwidth of 5, which is about 50%. So I'm also touching 4 and probably like the high 3K range as well. Um, the attenuation selector does not allow you to attenuate at 4K. So we attenuate at 5 and we roll, uh, we widen the Q. Uh, from the Pultec EQ, we go into an Aphex uh, Vintage Exciter. Uh, right now you're seeing that meter. It's just applying a tiny bit of the effect to the signal. I don't want to overdo it. There's my uh, output signal and there's my uh, input signal. Just a tiny, tiny bit. I like to just kiss the audio uh, with the Exciter. And then um, we are using a uh, bass, little bass booster right here. I have it set at uh, 70 hertz. And you'll see the meter, it's just flick it, flickering. Not too much. And if uh, you catch me on the air, you'll, uh, you'll hear a robust low end, uh, but nothing uh, too crazy. This is a nice, clean, it's called R-Base, nice, clean uh, bass effect. Uh, the signal then gets routed to this uh, auxiliary channel where I am just applying my room uh, reverb um, uh, side-chained. Very, very little bit of it. Uh, let's see, uh, if I turn this up, you'll hear it a lot more now, and I'm going to put it back down where it was. And, uh, from there, it flows over here 
to the uh, uh, main app, okay? And I could I could apply more effects here if I wanted to. Some people might want to apply a multiband compressor. I'm not doing that. I have done that. Um, you could also apply the reverb here if you'd like. Uh, I just apply it over here. And this sends the signal now back uh, to channel 5-6 of the XR, which you see here is DAW in and DAW out, uh, DAW in, excuse me. I have them stereo linked. Um, one other thing, if you look at all these other channels, you'll notice that I have these cha the, the main shut off. I'm not sending these channels over here to the main, okay? So this is my a non receive. I would not want to send that to the main. Otherwise, um, there'd be an audio hiccup when I keyed the radio because it would still be the, the main would be hearing the receive for a split second when I keyed the radio. I do not send my mic channel to the main because otherwise I'd be sending um, unprocessed audio from the DAW to the main. Uh, channel 4, it's not being utilized right now. Obviously, that's not going to the main. What is going to the main on the XR is the DAW in. So this is the audio from the DAW from Studio One. After it's processed and sent back into the XR, this now gets sent over here to the main. And the main, remember, the main is on USB channel one and two, and that is what Thetis hears. So this is the madness, um, I guess the madness to the method, not the uh, method to the madness, on how I route my audio. Um, again, I could probably get a very similar effect with just using the FX that come in the XR. Um, I personally don't like a lot of them. Some people do, that's great. Uh, this dual combinator, I will be playing with it. I already did. Um, you would, I would insert this on the main uh, to do a little multiband compression uh, on the last signal before it goes out to the Anon. Uh, but I do utilize CFC audio tools inside the Anon. I don't have any gain on any specific frequency. I just have it turned on to apply uh, 4 or 5 uh, dB of compression to uh, my signal, to my audio chain, uh, before it gets turned into RF. Well, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you have a fantastic week. Take care, everyone.